want my name beside Malcolm. Everybody got a deal. I did it without one. He's the golden boy from Canada. I'm proud to be Canadian, you know, that's all. And the rap world's most promising new star. I did it overnight, it couldn't happen any quicker. Lil Wayne has taken him in like a little brother. Wayne inspires me really to, to do all this stuff. And he's worked with every legend in the game, from Jay-Z to Kanye West. Everyone who doubted me is asking for forgiveness. If you ain't been a part of it, at least you got to witness. With hip-hop royalty in his corner, he's on his way to inheriting the throne of the new rap world. It's about time you admit it, who you kidding, man? Nobody's ever done it like I did it. Legions of fans waited anxiously for his debut album. I just want to be successful. <laughs> Making him the most hyped and anticipated rapper of all time. Um, one thing about music, when it hits you, feel no pain. He represents the new generation. I know this isn't it. I know this isn't the peak. I know there's always more to strive for, more to attain. The goal should always be to be one of the greats, you know, to be the best. Hey, hey, hey. Drake was born to be. <laughs> I can honestly say, you know, uh, there was a, a period in my life where I was in high school and um, I used to have trouble, you know, going to sleep at an early hour because I used to sit there and, and dream about hearing my name called, you know, at a Grammy nomination, press conference, something like this. Drake was at the Grammys and with two nominations, the young rapper's meteoric career had reached an all time high. He'd become hip hop's hottest freshman. But for every fan, there was a skeptic. The new rap star still hadn't released a full-length album. And many wondered if he was worth the hype. The last and only Canadian rapper to make it big out of the Great White North was Snow, an early 90s one-hit wonder. And as a former child TV star, Drake lacked the street cred and gangster persona many rap legends are made of. The pretty boy MC looked like he should be fronting a bubblegum pop band, not rhyming alongside a tattooed and battle-scarred veteran like Lil Wayne. So as Drake stepped on stage to close out the 2010 Grammys with his smash hit Forever, millions of people around the world were watching. Last name ever, first name greatest, like a spring ankle boy, ain't nothing to play with. And everybody was waiting to see if the golden boy from Toronto could actually deliver. Growing up as a biracial boy, Aubrey Drake Graham quickly learned what it was like being the outcast. Whether it was in the wealthy Forest Hill community of Toronto, where he was raised by his Jewish Canadian mother, or in the deep south of Memphis, where he visited his African American father, Aubrey never quite fit in anywhere. But that would all change at the age of 14, when Drake landed a role on the hit TV series Degrassi, The Next Generation. The thing about turning 14, it's like I'm a man now and quickly became one of the most popular cast members on the show. Acting in Degrassi was a great thing, and what I enjoyed most about it was it's an art form, it's a way to express yourself, and you know, you get to, you get to let a lot of things out in acting. Drake turned out to be a natural in his new role on Degrassi, playing Jimmy Brooks, a high school basketball star who becomes paralyzed after getting shot by a classmate. I go through a lot. I, I got shot last season, so uh, I have a lot of uh, accepting to do in my life, a lot of changes to make. In the show, Jimmy turns to rap as a way of expressing his emotions, and the role was a perfect fit, as Drake had become a hip-hop fanatic. And before long, Drake's first love of acting was replaced by a burning desire to make music. The one thing that always threw me off about acting was the amount of things you have to wait for. You have to wait for so many things to fall into place before you can actually do your job. Like, you gotta get the audition, you gotta have a project that's for you, you have to, you know, get the part, and then and, and then the project has to get greenlit, and it was just like, the process of waiting to work, I don't like waiting to work. At the age of 16, more and more consumed by music, the young teenager made a bold decision that shocked his mother and radically reshaped his life. 
Choosing to drop out of high school, Drake would use the extra time to become a full-on student of hip-hop, passionately studying American rap legends like Jay-Z. Jay is like my, my, my guy. He's my, my, my hero, you know? Delving deeper and deeper into hip-hop, Drake would discover his true calling in life. I finally found what I was meant to do because I wasn't meant to go to high school. I wasn't meant to play basketball. You know, I found these things out through the course of my life. February 2006. Four years had passed, and at the age of 20, Drake released his first mixtape. But local rap heads within the Toronto scene were skeptical, and many laughed at the thought of the Degrassi star becoming a credible rapper. I'm not my character on that show. I am I'm me. You have the option of getting involved in my life or just getting involved in the person that you see me as. Living in his mother's basement, the fledgling MC refused to give up and released his second mixtape one year later. And this time, he would use his own money to make a music video for a song from the tape called Replacement Girl. So many ways to look corny in a music video. So getting on camera and like trying to look cool is like a whole different story. You know, it's not Degrassi, it's, it's, it's another ball game. Replacement Girl paid off big time when BET caught hold of the video and named it Best New Joint of the Day on April 30th, 2007, making Drake the first unsigned Canadian to ever have a video featured on the network. Suddenly, the determined rapper gained some respect and credibility in his hometown where people were beginning to warm to his signature sound and witty wordplay. Recently, I, I've become more confident in the fact that people accept my brand of music. But as the Toronto rapper grew more successful and confident, he dreamed of expanding outside the city's borders into an international star who could be heard around the world. I know this isn't it. I know this isn't the peak, you know? So I, I know there's always more to strive for, more to attain. Little did he know, the answer to his dreams was just one short phone call away. December 2008. Drake was sitting in a Toronto barbershop getting his hair cut when his cell phone started ringing. What happened next was the stuff of urban legends. It was surreal at the time. I was getting my hair cut, so it was like, you know, I rarely pick up the phone when I'm getting my hair cut, but it was a long distance number. Wheezy, AKA Lil Wayne, the number one rap artist in the world was on the other end, asking Drake to jump on the next flight to Houston. For him to do what he does, and recognize the talent in me coming from Canada and hearing like I was on a TV show and still want to be like, yo, fly this kid out right now because I see, I know. And for it to be going as well as it's going, it kind of seems like it was meant to be. Drake would spend the next two weeks crisscrossing America aboard Lil Wayne's tour bus for the I Am Music tour. They say I'm rapping like Big J and Tupac, I'm Drake 3000. Wayne inspires me really to do all this stuff. He's like really my mentor, you know? I've never had a mentor or somebody to look up to. I look up to Wayne. The two rappers were from different worlds, but they formed a brotherly bond. I think we'll always have that sort of like little brother relationship. Like he's always proud of me and like it's the same thing to have him on the side watching my show, knowing that like you put me here, you know? And that's an amazing thing. Initiated into Lil Wayne's Young Money crew. Young Money thieves, steal your love and leave. Drake had landed the opportunity of a lifetime. You're in the presence of one of the greatest and I really have to pull my weight, you know, because he's vouching for me, so I better come through and audiences all across America began embracing the rapper as one of their own I think that I blend well with the Americans as, as they say they're not like oh that's some Canadian music it's good for Canadian music like they just say it's good music years of studying and emulating the great American rappers began paying off and the great part about it is because I'm not from one place I can go to Houston and Houston accepts me as a Houston artist and I go to New York New York radio embraces me like I'm a New York artist. It's like I belong to a whole bunch of different places because I'm not from any of them. But just when things were looking up, the unsigned artist found himself at a crossroad. Record labels were pressuring Drake to conform to the typical rap stereotype. After some soul searching, the rapper decided to stay true to himself 
and refuse to create a fake gangster persona. The way I would describe my sound though is, is, is genuine, it's authentic. I try and always keep it like true to me. And my mother tried to run away from home, but I left something in the car and so I caught it in the driveway. Choosing to rap about his own real life experiences, Drake would roll the dice gambling that he could strike a chord with fans on a more personal level. I just figured, you know, I'm at this point in my life, it's a rush, it's all happening, and as it unfolds, it would be amazing to tell this story because it's not all good. You, you learn there's ups and downs, and so I just try my best to tell that story. He would also gamble on a new sound, singing almost as much as he rapped to create a much more emotional style, setting him apart from the hip-hop pack. February 2009, the gamble paid off, and Drake's third mixtape, So Far Gone, spread across the internet like wildfire, becoming one of the most downloaded mixtapes of all time, exploding beyond the rapper's wildest dreams. I owe my father a lot because my father for years was telling me to sing, and I would always fight him. My dad would always be like, look, if you're going to rap, you got to do